hear people say all the time in sort of a, 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 a callous way, so much, so much money has gone into solving homelessness. Why haven't we solved it already? Um, you know, like it's just a, it's a simple problem. And I think it, it kind of, it just it really does shed a bad light on, on the situation. In your experience, what has been effective in breaking the cycle of homelessness, the most effective? to start with is really sort of changing public opinion about it. And I think one of the things that, that I'm seeing about this COVID situation is that it has allowed us to think in new ways about old problems that, you know, COVID uh, exacerbated problems that already existed. So problems with the healthcare system, problems with, you know, racism in housing, problems with um, the educational system, problems with the childcare system, they're all just sort of exacerbated problems that already existed and made them visible to everybody else. And I think given the situation, we have an opportunity now to really sort of look at these challenges with new lenses and sort of solve them with, with new solutions. So some of the things that actually work are well-funded programs that work. You know, I mean, you've got to, there's something to be said for a program that is funded fully. You know, a lot of our work is, um, is funded by contracts through city and state government. And as, as much as I love those government dollars, they, they never really are enough to cover the full cost of the programs. And so it really is important for us to do um, significant fundraising to make sure that we can make those programs whole so that we can have the best possible outcomes for our families. Um, we also need to make investments in evaluation and impact to make sure that our, that our programs are doing what we think they're supposed to be doing with regard to the outcomes for our families. I think the other thing that works is that when we start to think about housing as a human right, you know, I mean, it is one of the things that, you know, as we talked about earlier, that without stable housing, all things, other things go awry. And I think once we sort of think about, you know, housing as a human right, something that everybody deserves fundamentally, then we can change the way, the way, the way that we think about uh, providing housing for everyone involved. Um, I think the other thing that works is uh, public-private partnerships, that it's not really enough for us to you know, rely on government sources as, as a society, but I think it's also important for us to leverage companies and you know, companies that have incredible wealth and incredible interest in being socially responsible and being good neighbors in our society and really sort of working with those partnerships to make better outcomes for the families that we're serving. Couldn't agree more on that last point. <laughs> <laughs> you would. Yeah. <laughs>